Hey everyone, this is Angela from Bake It With Love and today we're making our mini homemade chicken pot pies all from scratch. It's really, really tasty and not as hard as you would think. So we're gonna start out with making our pastry crust uh, savory. You can add more to it to make it a sweet one if you'd like. And then we'll do our chicken pot pie filling and we'll put it all together here as we go. So first things first, we need four tablespoons of ice cold water and one stick of butter, nice and cold, cube it up, as well as a cup and a half of the all-purpose flour in your food processor. Blitz the butter until it's pea-sized chunks and then start drizzling in your cold water if you need a little bit more, if you need a little bit less. You know, you're looking for that right consistency where it's not all mush and remember that if your butter's starting to get warm where it's gonna start melting while you're working it, take this whole bowl off of your food processor, put it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes and then come back to it. So you need this crumbly appearance to your pastry dough and that's what we're gonna take off of there and we're gonna add it, lay it on some plastic wrap and refrigerate this. What I'm gonna do is just put the crumbly bits all on there then I'm going to push it down so that it's about an inch, inch and a half thick so that when I cover this and refrigerate it for about an hour, it will cool evenly. Now here's a quick preview of all the ingredients that are going to go into our pot pie filling. There's a few things that you can omit or add more of. We'll talk about those when we get there. So I've got some olive oil in the pan. It's a large stock pot type one. It's my all, you know, cook everything in. And I've got about a half a large onion or one whole small white or yellow onion works well here. Uh, it's actually about a half a cup if you want to measure it a little bit more because we like good flavor and this is cooking for quite a while so you don't have to worry about those chunks of onion that you know the like me I don't want to bite into them I've said it before I'll say it again I don't want to bite into raw onion when I have something creamy like this creamy goodness that's about three tablespoons of a dry white wine there after I have kind of seared off my onion and garlic and gotten this started then it's about a teaspoon of minced garlic in there. If you like garlic, add more. My husband does. I'm sure that was probably a really heavy teaspoon of garlic. Okay, so after your onion and garlic and a little bit of the olive oil and the white wine have cooked, you want your onions translucent. Again, we're cooking this for a while, so those are going to be really well cooked. We're going to add our carrots and celery, about a cup each. So depending on the size of the carrots, it's one to two carrots. And same thing with the celery stalks, two to three, roughly anywhere between a half a cup to a cup, depending on how much vegetables you like in your chicken pot pie filling, your gravy. And the next thing we'll do is add our pats of butter, two tablespoons-ish of butter. And then we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of flour to thicken this up. I'm using heavy cream, so it's gonna thicken pretty well on its own. Uh, half and half can also be used, but I don't suggest it with like even whole milk to make your gravy because you want this to thicken pretty well on its own. If you do whole milk, you have to offset the amount of flour. So you'd have to make that adjustment and that's not the way I make my pot pie filling. So <laughs> I don't have that off the top of my head to share. And then stir your flour in on top of those vegetables that are cooking and start adding your broth. We've also added a teaspoon of dried thyme and a half a teaspoon of dried oregano as well as about a third of a cup of chopped parsley. You can do less of that. You can use dried parsley, it's all right. Um, we love the green and then we've got about eh, about a pound of chicken meat that's been cubed here it's thigh meat a lot of people like breast meat you can do that but the thigh meat is just more tender more juicy so for this I say use thigh meat and you always you can always use whatever meat you've got on hand if you have like a rotisserie chicken you want to pull apart and put in this that works too this we're adding into our gravy and cooking it in there so that it's going to be extremely soft and moist. Now there's already a great amount of flavor and seasoning in here, but as always, add salt and pepper to your taste. We did about a teaspoon each. Now there were eight baby red potatoes laid out when I showed the ingredients. I ended up using six, um, and that's one of those things when you're cooking and you know you're flexible. Depending on the size of something, you may use less. The six that I added here was evenly distributed throughout the chicken pot pie filling gravy for a really nice ratio of chicken and vegetables with the potatoes. So I don't have a runny gravy at all. It's just, and you know, <laughs> you see me adding more there. A little bit more. And this actually, because we're cooking our gravy for a bit, 
shortly before we actually bake off our chicken pot pies, it means that everything is going to be nice and tender when we get to it, when we plate it up and serve it and enjoy it. And this is one of those dishes that's just such a, what, childhood favorite? I mean, who doesn't remember those little banquet pot pies? And they, they're like, I eat those now, they're terrible, but I, mean, I love those as a kid. So this is much better. It's a little bit more grown up version. And hey, if you love herbs and stuff, and if I didn't say it already, <laughs> in your dough, I, I call this my rustic chicken pot pie, but you know, you can add herbs into that pastry crust. Um, depending on what you're filling it with, like this, the thyme and rosemary and oregano could have gone into that pie crust beautifully. Would have worked wonderfully. Don't be shy. Now I'm done adding in all the more potatoes I can fit into this filling. I added a cup of peas. They were frozen and then thawed. You can always get fresh, but whatever you have on hand works. And I'm adding three quarter cup of heavy cream here. Earlier I did use one and three quarters cup of chicken broth. Um, and we have started making sure that the ingredients at least are in the information section below. So check there if you missed anything I'm saying or if you want to go copy and paste those into something. I try and link in the recipes on the website as quickly as possible, but I have family here this week so I'm running a bit behind. Sorry. Now we've been cooking this for a bit, so go ahead and taste that. Add salt and pepper as needed. Anything else you want to put in, a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, and uh, let it sit aside to cool. Now our pastry dough has been in the refrigerator cooling for about an hour, chilling in there. You're gonna unwrap it, put it on a well-floured working surface and just roll that out to about an eighth of an inch in thickness. Um, ideally, you'll be able to roll it out so that it's wide enough, long enough that you can do all your pie crusts in one fell swoop. Uh, if that doesn't work, remember that you can re-roll this out once and not again. Um, after that, it gets tough and chewy. Now, I'm actually using three of my ramekins to make these today. Uh, the three inch spring form little pans work beautifully. You can always go ahead and use a normal pie pan. This uh, is enough crust to do the top and bottom layer of one of those. Um, if you have, you know, the refrigerated or store bought pie crust and want to use that, that's fine too. Whatever works to get this on the table at dinner time, right? Because not everyone has time to sit around doing this all day. I totally understand that. But when you get adventurous, do try the from scratch. It's so rewarding when you have everything from scratch and it does, it makes a difference. You know that. So that's why you're watching. So I'm filling my little pie crust. I leave enough, I go along and kind of crimp the edges. I leave enough sticking up so that when I add the top layer of my crust, I can go along and kind of fold them over each other. So you can see I'm going to pull up my bottom and kind of fold it over and go along. In theory, it'll all match up. And then I'll take my fork and go along and crimp the sides. And then we're going to use an egg wash because you want that nice golden crust on the end. That's just one egg beaten and then take a brush and uh, go over the top of this crust. Use a knife though, a sharp knife to trim your edges like I was. And then you also use that sharp knife to poke like four slits in the top. You want that steam to be able to escape so that everything cooks and it doesn't bubble up. Then we do our egg wash here, and then we're going to bake it in an oven, 375 degrees, about 30 minutes. And it's 30 minutes in the oven, just enough time to get a nice golden crust without worrying about burning, especially these small ones. So I hope you get to try this out soon. If you'd like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our uploads or upcoming recipes. As always, we're so happy to have you here with us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.